Um, so now we're going to talk about uh, the integral test and the p-series. And um, let me fix this. The integral test <laughs> and the p-series. Now, um, again, there are multiple ways that you could determine if a series converges or diverges. This is just one other method. Okay, so um, if f is positive, continuous and decreasing. So this function has to be positive, has to be continuous, and has to be decreasing for all x greater than or equal to 1. Then either, you know, both of these converge or both diverge. So basically we're going to take the integral from 1 to infinity from here to here of, you know, f of x, which we'll say f of n you know, this function basically uh, represents this nth term and see what happens here. If this converges, then this converges. If this diverges, then this diverges. But we have these conditions that have to be met to basically be able to use the integral test. It has to be positive, continuous, and decreasing. So uh, let's look at this. Um, this one says, you know, apply the integral test. But let's first determine... Um, if this series uh, follows those requirements to be or uh, to use the actual integral test. Um, so the requirements of the integral test. The first one, and we'll just look back real quick, is that it should be positive, right? So, you know, is this always positive for n greater than or equal to 1? So, you know, if I plug in 1 or anything bigger than 1, the numerator is positive. If I plug in 1 or anything greater than 1 on the denominator or in the denominator, the denominator is also always positive, which means that this thing is always positive, and therefore the first requirement is met. All right, so again, check to see if it's positive. Um, is it continuous, right, for all values? greater than or equal to 1. Is it continuous? Well, you know, if you think about this kind of situation, I think, you know, vertical asymptotes. But this doesn't really have any vertical asymptotes because this is plus and not minus down here. So there are no discontinuities. And, you know, any value greater than or equal to 1, I could plug in and have no problems. It's continuous. So, you know, the second requirement is also met. The third requirement is that it's always decreasing for values greater than or equal to 1. So, Let's just see what happens when we plug in the first few uh, and find the first few terms. You know, let's plug in 1. You know, I get 1 over 1 squared plus 1, 1 half. Um, the second term would be, you know, when I plug in 2. 2 over 4 plus 1, which is 5. So far, 1 half is 0.5. 2 fifths is less than 0.5. So it's decreasing. Let's see what happens when we have the third term. 3 over... 3 squared, which is 9, plus 1 over 10. This is also decreasing. This is So, I mean, you can convert these into decimal form if you want to, but 0 0.5, you know, um, this is 0 0.4, this is 0.3. So it's going down, 0 0.3. Um, if I plug in n is equal to 4, I get 4 over um, 4 squared, 16 plus 1 over 17. You'll notice that if I continue, this is always decreasing. So the third requirement is met. So this particular uh, nth term here, a n, is not only positive, it's also continuous, and it's decreasing. Positive, continuous, and decreasing for all values greater than or equal to 1, which means we can use the integral test. And then I can set it up and say the integral from 1 to infinity of n over n squared plus 1 dn. Or, you know, if you'd like to use x, you could say from 1 to infinity of x over x squared plus 1 dx. If this converges, uh, this converges. If this diverges, this diverges. So now it's about finding an improper integral, which goes back to the last chapter. You have to take the limit as, let's call it b, approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of x over x squared plus 1 dx, and u sub um, will work here, and uh, I'm just going to 
go straight to it. You know that if we use u sub, the denominator would have to be the u. And so this would have to be my du. So I would need a 2 because it's 2x, the derivative of the bottom. And therefore, I get a 1 half in front. So now when I take the actual integral, putting the 1 half in front, the 1 half times the limit as b approaches infinity of, this is, you know, du over u. So the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 1 from 1 to b. If I uh, plug in my values, 1 half times the limit as oops, b approaches infinity of the natural log of b squared plus 1 minus the natural log of 1 squared plus 1 or 2. If I plug in infinity here, right, I'm going to get infinity. Well, infinity minus a number times a number is still infinity, which means that this, you know, integral diverges, which means based on the integral test that this series also diverges. Okay, so if I'm using the integral test, and this is only one test, it's not the only one, and this is not the only type of test that I could use to actually determine if this series converges or diverges. I can use other tests as well. You know, you could probably even try the nth term test and see if that works. Um, but this is just another method. But in order to use the integral test, I have to check those three requirements. If they're not all met, then this test cannot be used. But if... Um, those three requirements are met based on what happens from the integral I could determine what happens with the series so let's look at another one um, apply the integral test to this series uh, so let's determine the requirements again the first requirement is that it always has to be positive and you know looking at it a positive over a positive is positive so that works it has to always be continuous for values greater than or equal to 1, which it is. You know, if I plug in anything on the bottom here greater than or equal to 1, no problem. Um, actually, there are no vertical asymptotes either. This is good. And then it should always be decreasing, which actually, if you look at it, you should re uh, realize that no matter what, um, the denominator is always going to be going um, up. The numerator will always be the same. The denominator is always going to increase. And as the denominator of a fraction increases, the whole fraction continuously decreases. So it satisfies that. Um, you can also, again, like I said, plug in the first few values if you want. 1 half when n is equal to 2. 1 over 4 plus 1. 1 over 5. Uh, 1 over 10 blah, 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 blah. Um, like I said, as the denominator continues to increase and the numerator stays the same, the whole fraction decreases. The larger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. So third requirement is also met. So now I can say, let's take the integral from 1 to infinity over one of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx and see what happens to this to determine what happens to this using the integral test. So, um, Actually, so you're going back to your different rules of integration and hopefully you realize that you have, you know, u squared plus a squared where u is equal to x and a is equal to 1. Um, so we have a special arctan. So if I were to determine this limit as n approaches, actually, sorry, limit as b approaches infinity from 1 to b of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, I'm going to get the limit as b approaches infinity of, this is an arctan, um, 1 over a or 1 over 1 times arctan of um, u over a, so in this case x, from 1 to b, um, the limit, as b approaches infinity of arctan of b minus arctan of 1. Um, plug in infinity, I get arctan of infinity minus arctan of 1. And this is a special situation. 
This is equivalent to pi over 2. We talked about that. An arctan of 1, you know, basically where is tangent equal to 1 pi over 4. And then I combine, combine these. I mean, at the end of the day, you see a number of that. Uh, basically, this is going to be equal to a number. So times 2 times 2. So 2 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is pi over 4, which means that this thing converges. And therefore, this series converges.